Hey traders, checking in on the stock market today. Bullish reaction to CPI numbers. We'll see if bulls are able to hold those gains into the rest of the week. Key support levels are our guides. Before we get into it, we've got a free webinar next Tuesday, the 16th. Lori's going to lead it. Navigating the world of futures. If you have any curiosity of futures, the tax benefits for trading futures, this is the webinar for you. How to manage risk, some demos. Lori certainly provides good information and she will do so again as well. So click the link in the description of this video and secure your spot. So we headed into the CPI reaction this morning. The past couple days, bulls looking a little bit tired, still keeping control, but bull breaks, not really seeing much follow through, a little bit of indecision. And today was just a shot of steroids in the butt for the bulls that gave that follow through and pushed us to new highs. So we're gonna continue to monitor our daily higher lows and that's what helped us yesterday from getting overly bearish. There were a couple little clues. We had the red day and we had the dollar still showing us weakness even though the market was red and the S&P 500 maintained the daily higher low and now we have even more space to work with to keep those daily higher lows going. So we're in the kind of market environment right now where bears are just getting frustrated as we keep grinding up. And right now the bear narrative is this is just a bear market rally and we're going to top out real soon and then dump to fresh lows. And maybe that's the case, but it's a frustrating environment because bears are just not following through at all. So something that I'm going to keep in mind is imagining things from both sides of, of the equation here and putting my bear glasses on, but I am going to maintain bullish. And what today does, yesterday's video, I mentioned how I'm not really comfortable going bullish at these levels. Now that we have this leg up, now I have comfort because the next time we consolidate, I'm confident in hourly higher lows being the result of that consolidation. So that is where I then start looking for bullish entries again. After yesterday, we didn't have hourly higher lows to look to be playing, but now we do. So today I mostly did trade bearish as you know most of the bull gains were to be had on the initial reaction, which I was being patient and waiting for. And I'll show you a couple trades that I took today bearish, but overall going to be scouting hourly higher lows for bullish entries and daily higher lows for bulls to maintain control. We know weekly consolidation is not coming as long as we have daily higher lows. Another thing, as far as the sell the news reaction to CPI, if you're going to head into a sell the news event or a buy the news event, you need to be extended in the opposite direction. So the lack of bull conviction the last couple of days wasn't really the setup for the sell the news. If we had, you know, if this action was the move into CPI, then I look for sell the news. If it's sideways, then I don't look for sell the news because what that sideways shows me is bears positioning for that CPI reaction and then being forced to stop out if it's a bull reaction. Whereas if you have a straight up bull reaction into the event, you don't have a lot of bears that are building positions into that. But that tightening sideways range for a few days allowed for some bear position building and then stopped them out. So if we're looking at SPY, well, the S&P 500 does have a key weekly resistance here. So we're going to keep an eye on that. And we did break it, but not convincingly at this point. So we're keeping an eye on the weekly resistance. As of right now, SPY has retraced 50% of the entire drop. So we dropped $90, $94, whatever it is. And we've now bounced half of that. And again, tons of space for the weekly higher low from here. So next time we consolidate, I'm going to call anything above 410.22 a daily higher low, which means we can pull back 2% and still be in a daily uptrend. Daily EMA 12 will be the guide as well. And as far as SPY price levels of resistance, we're now looking back at 423.17 and 427.81 as a couple levels. Strong closes today, all sectors participating and bears just unable to get follow through. They had a chance. You know, first thing this morning, when we saw this five minute equilibrium bear break, I was in a couple bearish positions from just entering from the initial bull push up on the pre-market move. And as soon as we hit that fresh low and then V-shape back to the high, I mean, that tells us that bulls are keeping full control. 
And that's just a quick little hourly high or low for an hourly bull flag. So that to me was proving some bull follow through. And the NASDAQ daily resistance is still here. So we haven't hit the higher high yet, but it's a daily bull flag attempt. And again, as long as EMA 12 holds, then these are going to be bull flags have to lose daily EMA 12 to see a big enough pullback to not be a bull flag. And if bulls are able to clear that resistance level, we can see on Kiki Q 326.47, we are right there. But if we break it, we're looking at 329.66 as a little resistance zone here. There's three tops from the way down in the 329s. And that's the next resistance zone that we're looking at. And again, same thing above. Anything above 315.42 will be a daily higher low. So long story short, indecision the last couple of days, bulls looking like they were tiring, and now a big enough push up to scout hourly higher lows and daily higher lows while we consolidate. Next time we consolidate. Obviously a green day tomorrow would go a long way for continued confidence. So semiconductors, daily higher low is set. And it was a big pullback, but it is still an uptrend. So the question is, do we set a lower high compared to 245.74 or not? So our new daily higher low is 226.73. We haven't confirmed an hourly uptrend during regular trading hours, at least not a clear one, because we had the week bounce into the end of yesterday, CPI reaction and bullish day today. So if bulls are going to have confidence in potentially heading back to the recent high of 245.74, we will have to confirm an hourly trend change during regular trading hours to establish that uptrend to be able to see follow through enough to get up there. But there are some names like NVDA where we're keeping an eye out for a daily lower high because that resistance of 192, it's just round 193, that resistance is still a solid, what, 6% away from where we stand? So keeping an eye on that, Hourly here does have an uptrend. Well, again, not during regular trading hours. But potential head and shoulders, if we were to have a red day tomorrow, that would increase probabilities to be scouting for a daily lower high. So essentially, if we see any weakness from here, the names where I'm going to be looking bearish will be any names that are not breaking recent daily highs like NVDA and SMH. I'm keeping an eye on CCJ. CCJ is holding daily EMA 12 in the higher lows, but it's a big picture weekly equilibrium and it was a little bit weaker today than I would have anticipated. So I'm still keeping an eye out for the possibility that we fail 2828 resistance and maintain within this tightening range. So any broader market weakness, and I'll be keeping an eye on CCJ for the potential bear side of things. Energy sector, also watching for a potential inability to get over 78.66. Again, pretty much the names that just have a daily resistance level nearby and in play, as opposed to names that are breaking out. As far as names where I'm looking bullish, I'm looking bullish on all the names that have space for daily higher lows and hourly higher lows. So most names, I mean, the biotech sector is what I've been trading most often. So the biotech sector is a daily bull flag. And it was a laggard this morning, not participating. We were just trading within a 15-minute tightening range. And in the second half of the day, the bulls showed up. So we're in a laggard market environment. And what I mean by a laggard market environment is confidence in the broader market and names that are not participating, keep an eye on them to participate. And this is just a short-term example of that. But again, that's why I'm watching the cannabis space so closely because here you have CGC and the, the whipsaw back and forth the last three days has been wild in this sector. We went up 20% on Monday. And then from the close on Monday to the close of yesterday, we dropped 12%. And then from the low of today to the high of today, we went up 17%. Double digit percentage moves three days in a row in both directions is very significant. I've got poison ivy. So what I'm watching for is a laggard move. Because if you look at weekly time frames, the vast majority of bulls in this market have bounced a lot more significantly than this. And we're watching to see, does CGC get the laggard break into this gap fill up towards 345? Back test and hold of daily EMA 12 support. So as far as I'm concerned, we are in a laggard bullish environment where names that have not run 
significantly. We're keeping an eye on them to part potentially participate. Healthcare. Sideways range the last few days, trying to break bull. The recent high of 133.81 is back in play. And this would be bullish continuation inside bar. Bull break did take place. Have to clear 133.81 for the breakout to follow through, for the weekly trend change to follow through. Again, we are in a weekly uptrend. Financial sector, big lead bull the last few days. Big gap up, strong close. And this was actually my most profitable trade of the day was shorting this, but we'll go into that in just a second. Remember back here where we were saying, all right, the financial sector is our weakest sector. And we're watching to see, does our weakest major sector join team bull? And from that little daily bull flag, it's been nothing but significant strength. And so that's exactly what happens. And again, that's how I approach the day trading day is watching all our major sectors, seeing who's lead bull, who's lead bear, and how does that shift through the morning? And so this was just an example of doing so on the longer term swing trading mindset. And so once our weakest major sector started to show us strength, that gives you strength and confidence in the market as a whole. So now the financial sector bounce is significant. We're approaching weekly resistance of 3556. And we will still need a weekly trend change here as well if it's going to have significant follow through. And there are a lot of places where we are scouting monthly lower highs. So again, you know, I'm not ruling out the bear narrative of things because if XLF were to confirm a monthly downtrend with a lower high and lower low, that would be extremely notable. The moves, the, the weakness that the market is able to shake off most often is the straight shot down that straight drop of fear and then once that fear is alleviated you get that slow grind back up and so the question for the financial sector is is that what's going to happen are we going to just slow grind back up with fear eliminated or are we setting up to confirm a monthly downtrend so, and this is what i mean i mean we obviously had the cvid example of the fast flush and v-shaped bounce but we have not seen a monthly downtrend in xlf in Four years. So it would obviously be very notable to us if that were to happen. But we're watching our bounce retracement sizes. And again, SPY has already bounced 50%, but the financial sector is still at that 382 level. So we would need to see another few percent, another 5% to the upside if we're going to get that 50% retracement and then start looking towards the potential of an equilibrium as opposed to a potential bear flag. If the bounce were to top out right here and right now, it would be a potential monthly bear flag. IWM has been a lead sector, very significant. Oh, not mid video. It just, all oh, my charts. All right, IWM. So IWM, significant strength and follow through. Anything above 189.16 is a daily higher low. Again, just using those little daily higher lows as our guide. And resistance after 195.95, we're looking at 196.85 and then 204.26. The pullback was more significant here on the way down. But a solid bounce underway. How long can bulls maintain the daily uptrend? Biotech sector, again, daily bull flag, trying to shape up. New key support is 89.14. And a bull break of the recent high would resume complete control of the bulls, 95.10 and then 97.19 as a couple key levels. So we talked cannabis, TLRY, a bit weaker than CGC. But again, in the same boat, if bulls can keep control, man, that 380 level, I keep forgetting about it, but that is the place to play off of. Today, 384, 382. 380, 379, 380. Bulls are clearly defending that level. And a daily inside bar today for TLRY. ATAI, my ATAI, my psychedelic swing set the daily higher low. Earnings next week are going to be key. About recent resistance of 486 to try and see 
Bull break follow through there. CMPS, the other psychedelic name, is a potential daily bull flag inside bar today. So again, if the broader market bulls keep grinding higher, we're going to look for these names to see continuation as well. The dollar. So the dollar is one of the clues yesterday. Again, we can't look at that and say we're going to have a big bull reaction to CPI, but it was a point in favor of the bull column, the fact that the dollar was weak while the stock market consolidated. And now the dollar is not convincingly giving us a weekly higher low at this point, And it's still just battling to hold weekly EMA 12. So for the rest of the week, we're watching to see, do we close below weekly EMA 12 for the first time this year? Nope, not this year, but for the first time in seven months. So keeping a close eye on the dollar. And the more we pull back, the ideal scenario for a market bull is a big enough pullback to create space for the weekly downtrend to eventually confirm. But we're not there yet. As long as we hold weekly EMA 12, the longer term uptrend is still strong. The metals have to be cautious for those rising wedges. We had a bullish reaction to CPI, but very short lived. So this is the gold rising wedge on the four hour time frame. If the rising wedge breaks bare, we zoom out and we'll scout a daily higher low. Again, EMA 12 is a nice visual guide here. And silver has one as well. Four hour uptrending resistance line, rejecting the price. Again, still holding on strong. This is just something to keep an eye on and be cautious of if you are bullish because the breaks today saw zero follow through. Miners with a little bit of follow through today, higher lows and higher highs. But if you look at this bounce, there's not a lot of conviction still. And the biggest green days for miners happen when stocks are strong and metals are strong. And we have not seen the two do the same thing together to give us a big green candle in quite some time. Like these are the kinds of days where it's stocks are up and metals are up. But we're not seeing that on this bounce. And again, the miners have work to do to convince us it's not a weekly bear flag. The miner I am swinging is NEM. And we did break 4588 resistance, but now we're dealing with the daily EMA 12 and also 4665 resistance, which we pulled back just under. So still fairly sideways overall. Oil, falling wedge on the daily, continuing to shape up. Held support at the low of today. So watching that tightening range. We could also probably tighten that up a little bit if we wanted to. And again, that's why these trend lines are just my visual guide. Because as far as my rules and criteria are concerned, my trend line could look like that, or it could look, you know, I always go to the real bodies, but there's plenty of ways to fiddle it around just a little bit, but that just little bit is multiple percent of price movement. But we're watching that as a visual guide for the potential of the bull break, just like natural gas saw, natural gas four hour falling wedge that we were watching broke bull. Again, the clues are the bear breaks with no follow through. And then we did confirm the four hour trend change. And now we're watching 8586 as the bulls are trying to shape up this weekly higher low and keep that weekly consolidation fairly healthy overall if that is our weekly higher low. Still proving to be done. But nice falling wedge bull break. We'll see if oil is able to do so eventually as well. So that's where we stand. Again, I do want bearish swing trade positions for weekly consolidation, but I'm not going to look for them on a daily basis, and I don't care about nailing the top. If we confirm an hourly downtrend, then I'll be much more inclined to be looking for those positions and have resistance levels to be playing off of. But right now with where we stand, as long as the daily higher lows keep coming, I'm going to keep a bit of a bull lean as far as what I think the market is doing in the short term. Another high volatility name was MARA, crypto miner, big time follow through. It had relative strength comparative to Bitcoin and the NASDAQ, so it was stronger than everything. And that's another name where looking for an hourly higher low, 
Actually, it was the end of the day. I had my buy order filled out for a market buy when 16 psychological broke and I just froze. I think it had to do with the fact that it was the end of the day and I didn't want to ruin a green day with a, a trade at the end. But that was something that I was interested in reflecting upon at the end of the day as to why I did not press that button because it gave me exactly what I wanted. Probably because five minute RSI was not oversold as well. It was two minute oversold, which I was keeping an eye on, but that five minute RSI had only dropped down to about 35 or so. All right, I don't have any into video content, so I'll share a couple good, do good things, examples to hopefully inspire you all to do good things yourself as well. I shared these recently on Twitter, but recently found an empty wallet that had just cards in it and I returned it to the individual with a hundred dollar bill in it because I thought that was funny and she was very appreciative. Gave my used farm truck away to a family on Facebook who was in desperate need and that thing sat around 99.5% of the time so I couldn't justify looking at it anymore. Also, what else? Gave out some, uh, some interest-free loan to some friends. One friend is a glass blower. Very good one, getting his business off the ground. Another one is remodeling a homie bot. And certainly plenty of examples. It's easy to do good things financially, but don't have to have financial backing to do good things. You can get creative with it. Let's see, non-financial things. Two days ago, I was walking into Whole Foods and the, the cart guy had a big train of carts and he was struggling to get over the, the bump to get into the building. I gave him a push from behind. Little ways to help people makes you feel good, makes them feel good, makes everybody happier. Appreciate you watching, and we'll see you tomorrow.